For the past week, I've been thinking about this rock star who I only came across a few years ago when me and my brother were in the car just on our way to school and on the radio we heard out of fucking nowhere this. Electric eel, electric eel, electric eel, electric we found this shit hilarious and we couldn't stop laughing. I remember through the remainder of the school day, it's all I could think of. I mean, it was just so fucking funny. It was early in the morning, you know what I mean? Um, it was out of nowhere. It's not something you'd usually hear, you know? So I sent it to all my friends. We instantly fell in love with it. And it wasn't until a week back, a few years later, where I stumbled across one of his other songs because the instrumental sounded the exact same. So I did some digging and found a documentary on him. I just looked into him more. And I have to say, he was and is an absolute legend. A truly an inspiration. I'm not going to lie. Leslie Willis was an interesting artist, both with music and, well, art. Despite an unfortunate upbringing, being transferred to different foster homes, and his really tough experience with schizophrenia, something about Willis that everyone remembers is he would make everyone that he met happy. Whether it be through his humor that he'd depict in his music, just him in general, his outstanding personality, his really impressive art, or for his famous headbutts he'd give as greetings to fans. His art was really impressive. The attention to detail on each building, vehicle, the expressways he'd draw were honestly stunning. I mean, he would draw these without a table, mind you, most of the time. He would draw these on his lap. From the experience I have with drawing or writing on my lap, that shit is not easy. That's really fucking difficult. So, props to him. He'd even draw in this art shop where he caught the attention of some experienced artists, you know, professors and colleges and stuff, and they digged his style, they digged his detail on these expressways he'd draw. He'd always draw locations and cities he would visit and go to, you know? I mean, his artwork truly did feel personalized, if you really look at it. I'm gonna be honest, despite its odd first impressions, it didn't take me long to absolutely love his music. The reason is purely because of its charm and its humor. Whatever the subject of a song may be, which it honestly really fucking varies, it could be about fucking McDonald's. Rocky Roll McDonald's! Rocky Roll McDonald's! Rocky Roll McDonald's! To this. His music really could be anything, complete with his unfiltered thoughts and his great humor. I just love how the first song I heard from him was telling three stories at once, all while being centered around fucking electric eels, like. And you gotta love how one of his songs was about him kicking Batman's ass, or even fucking Spider-Man's ass, like, I mean, he really had no fucking mercy making this shit. I could go on and on about his music, I mean, he made 40 plus albums in the matter of 10 years, which is absolutely insane, but part of the reason is because the instrumentals may sound the exact same. And that's because they all use this, like, demo feature on the keyboard he used to use. It would play an audio cue, pretty much. So it makes sense why these songs were somewhat fast to develop, and they're usually only around two minutes. I mean, he liked them shorter. It doesn't take away from his funny and creative lyrics. I mean, the creative random topics that he'd throw at you, I mean, holy shit, there's so many. It's really not hard to figure out why everyone likes this guy. <laughs> Utter a profanity here right at me. To express his love for his fans, he'd pretty much give them headbutts. Yeah, you heard that right. He'd headbutt his fans. He got fist bumps, high fives, he'd headbutt them. And uh, through all these headbutts he'd get from his fans, he actually started to grow like an injury on his head. But yeah, I mean, it's such a great way of showing his appreciation. I mean, he was willing to hurt himself just to express his love to his fans, you know? I mean, that was crazy. I mean, you gotta appreciate his admiration. He would practically work himself to death with all the tours he would go on, right? He'd play his legendary music and, you know, give his fans headbutts. Sucker. Demons tell me I'm a jerk, a bum, 
and an asshole. I yell, I scream, I holler at people on buses. The one with friends is a joyride. But despite being such an admiral, funny, creative legend, he had his own hardships that were really hard to overcome. His experience with schizophrenia was anything but enjoyable for both him and the people around him. He was diagnosed sometime in the 80s, and he would often recall hearing demons talk badly about him, so he'd often scream vulgar obscenities in public. He'd hit himself. The medication he was on didn't really help. I mean, it suppressed these demons, sure, but it was also hindering it as drive to do things, and it wasn't suppressing the demons in the way, you know, he'd want. There are some um, very powerful antipsychotic drugs that he was on that had terrible side effects, like tardic dyskinesia, which would be um, like tics, uh, swelling of the tongue, slurred speech, his breathing was very labored, he gained a lot of weight, um, he wasn't as sharp, but on the other hand, he felt like he needed to have medication, and he felt insecure if he didn't have his medication. Which is why his music really helped. Some of his tracks were a clear fuck you message to these voices he couldn't get out of his head. All while doing that, he garnered a whole bunch of fans who loved his music and his personality. Unfortunately, Wesley got leukemia in sometime around the early 2000s, but... Fortunately, he beat it the first time around. I mean, some would even say he beat leukemia's ass with a belt, which is absolutely nowhere near far from the truth, but, um, the leukemia did come back around, but he was prescribed medication that was successful at preventing it. It's just that Wesley forgot to take these meds usually, or he forgot to refill them. Uh, he was always busy traveling, going on tour. He was just doing the things he loved, you know? But, unfortunately, Wesley Willis sadly passed away, surrounded by loved ones. But even moments before, he was still working on his deathbed with his keyboard near him and drawing his last pieces of art. I just love bumping my friends here for joy. Okay. I just bump it for joy when they say rah and rah. Finding out about Wesley to taking a dive into who he really was and all the lives he touched was one of the most surreal things I've ever done. This man touched the lives of many, even me, and he died before I was even born, so that really goes to show. He was the absolute best towards his fans. He was always ready to offer a greeting and give them all the music and art he could make. It's impressive how he started from drawing expressways on the streets to performing live to so many people in so many places with all these creative topics he'd come up with, with his, combined with his amazing humor. Even with his mental illnesses and tough pasts holding him back, he truly is an inspiration, and I would give a lot just to get one of his famous headbutts. Rest in peace to a legend, but most importantly, the daddy of rock and roll. Headbutt me. God struck me down. He did it to me because I was playing with him. That teaches me a lesson not to do it again. Electric eel, electric eel. 